Everybody's got their own idea of how things should be if they ruled the world. Like, I would rename Iceland to Niceland, and rename Greenland to Meanland, just to see what happens. Being a ruler really comes down to deciding how to allocate resources. Let's say this is your country of 100 people. How would you spread out the available wealth? If you're a totalitarian socialist, you might draw your ideal chart like this, so that everyone has the same share. If you're a free market capitalist, this is probably the chart for you. If you're a basic income enthusiast, you like this version. Here in America, our wealth is distributed like this. Macroeconomists have special terminology they use to describe this kind of exponentially steepening curve. It's fucked up. While some people are benefiting nicely from the current situation, it's not like anybody started off saying, hey, let's have a system where a tiny fraction of people hold all the power and resources while everyone else scrapes by. According to my history teacher, America was actually founded with the exact opposite intention of distributing at least decision-making power to everyone. So why is this curve so steep? Is it because rich people are greedy? Poor people are lazy? Too much corporate power? Too much government interference? Immigration? Globalization? You could dedicate many hours on Reddit debating this question. But what if there's something else going on besides who's right and who's wrong? A while back I saw a blog post that got me thinking. It talked about a mathematical simulation that goes like this. Imagine a room full of 100 people with $100 each. With every tick of the clock, every person with money gives a dollar to one randomly chosen other person. Sounds like a fair deal. Everyone's spending freely and everyone's got an equal shot at getting a dollar. Should work out okay for everybody. I programmed my own version of this simulation just to mess around with. Here you see each person gets a number, and here's the number of the person they give their dollar to. Let's use a dot to show each person, and make it so the size of the dot represents how much money they have. The colors are just to make it pretty for now. Except for the white color, which marks the one with the most money. Now we'll speed it up and run it for a while. This one here seems to be making some gains. This one here is having trouble. To make it easier to see, let's put everybody's money on a bar chart. This is this person's money, and this is this person's. Now we can put the bars in order from least to most money. Now the pretty colors help you see them changing position every tick of the clock. Starting to look kind of familiar. The math behind this is pretty interesting. If you're curious, I left a few links in the description. But the gist of it is, we're basically watching 100 people each roll a 100-sided die. For things to work out nice and evenly, no one could roll the same number as anyone else. Person 1 would have to roll a 2, person 2 has to roll a 3, person 3 has to roll a 4, and so on. It would be the exact opposite of random. The nice part of this totally random simulation is that if you run it long enough, each person will at some point occupy each of these positions, including the one at the top. A random distribution might not be a totally accurate, all-encompassing explanation for wealth inequality, but it's weird how close it gets. I'm going to tinker with a few things just for fun. Pretend everybody keeps their money in the same bank, so their wealth grows by some percent every cycle. These little lines here show the completely random version, just for reference. Everybody's doing better, but the more money a person has, the more money they get back. So we see the curve getting more severe. Now what if we just went ahead and added a flat tax on everybody's wealth? And then we take the money collected and divide it evenly between everyone. This is kind of like a universal basic income funded by a wealth tax. Ooh, that's nice. Everybody's growing together. Now I'll try something like what we're planning with commingle. Whenever a person receives some money, they take part of it and put it into a pool. Then the money gets divided evenly between everyone. The impact to the curve is a lot more subtle, since it's based on income, not wealth, but you can still see it working. Commingle is voluntary though, so to simulate that, I'll make two groups. The cool colored group just distributes their dollar to anyone, same as before, while the warm colored group distributes most of their dollar to one random person, but the rest gets pooled and divided between the other commingler's. You can see who fares better. A system with some built-in generosity seems like a better bet all around. I'm sure you could sit and watch me play with this all day. The real question this raises for me, though, is what if there's more to the issue of economic injustice than just who's to blame? The governments, corporations, and institutions that define our system of living are all made up of people, and people are made up of contradictions. Sometimes we're selfish, sometimes we're generous, sometimes we're lazy, sometimes we're motivated, sometimes we're working to make something out of our lives, sometimes we just need to take out the garbage. The way these tendencies express themselves can change over the course of a day, depending on how much sleep you got, what you had for lunch, or who you're hanging out with. Our brains seem to perform an ongoing balancing act between opposing inclination. This balancing act extends to groups of brains as well, and in a free democracy, our contrasting opinions combine to provide direction for society as a whole. Sometimes the consensus leans in one direction, sometimes in another. We argue over which direction is best, but that's part of the balancing act. Voices of reason argue with voices of emotion, voices of love clash with voices 
places of hate. Can the outcome of these inner and outer conflicts be mapped with randomness? And if so, maybe we can outsmart the randomness in a way that benefits everyone. We're in the middle of a technological revolution that's disrupting pretty much everything we're used to and connecting us in ways we barely know how to handle. At Comingle, we're using the same technology to help us help each other without detracting from the promises of the American experiment, which for the most part has turned out to be a pretty great way for organizing ourselves. A system based on all of us having the freedom to pursue whatever pursuits we feel like pursuing when we're left to our own devices. Just imagine how amazing we could be if we all had a bit of money to fall back on. Go here to see how you can help, and don't forget to like and subscribe.